Before the sun rises over Hilton Head Island, the sea turtle patrol is on the sand. We had a report that there is a sea turtle still on the beach, and we might get a glimpse of it. Let's go check it out. Yeah, let's go see. Excellent. Let's approach her from behind. Okay. She can see us and she can hear us, so I, I don't want to, you know, disturb her. Those are her back flippers, her back flippers. and what she's doing right now is she's disguising her nest. They're so instinctual, she knows we're here. Yeah. But she's gonna do it anyway. Sure. The process of finding nests usually isn't this easy. I go in with my hands until I find the nest chamber. I'm pretty sure, yep, you got it. So here's the first egg. Wow. The careful work of these volunteers allows for one egg to be used for research and the rest to be relocated far from the ocean's edge, allowing them to hatch in peace. This sea turtle's mom swam hundreds of miles to get to this beach, but this egg's journey is just beginning. The egg then comes here to this University of Georgia lab where researchers spend hours learning everything there is to know about where this little guy comes from. For the past 20 years, UGA research scientist Dr. Brian Shamblin has been working to extract DNA from thousands of sea turtle eggs. But we're getting to that point where a single egg can tell us who mom is, who dad is, and with that yolk, possibly where mom has been spending most of her time. Knowing what sea turtles do after leaving the shores of the Carolinas is crucial for Shamblin's research. That kind of information key to the entire species' survival. The better we understand their life cycle and the demographics behind that, you know, how many individuals and how many offspring they're having, the better the managers are able to understand how emerging threats may impact the population. And it's those threats that has Shamblin worried. We're concerned about things like climate change, plastics, you know, microplastics that are out there being ingested and how that may impact the turtles. Taylor Faraday is a master's student at UGA. Does she have daughters? Does she have sisters? And so it's so cool to be able to take this nest that we've just, you know, numbered 100 and whatever, and then all of a sudden, this is actually a mom, and this is her story, and we're able to learn a lot about her and how many times has she been nesting and when did she start, and hopefully she'll do it for many seasons. It's the hope of Shamblin that teams in the lab and on the beach get to do this research for many seasons. There's a lot of need out there. The policymakers, the managers, they're seeing other areas where they need to divert that funding because those species are in worse shape. And so we've been having to rely more on donations and private funding to try to keep this project going. Back in Hilton Head, volunteers on the beach take it all in. When you see them in the water, you're just like, oh my gosh, you know, that is amazing. Love at first sight. Oh gosh, yeah. They've been around for millions of years, and basically humans are the main reason that, that they're under threat from a conservation perspective. So I feel like we have a moral obligation to try to do what we can to try to right some of the wrongs that have put them in the predicament they're in. Wow. Let's bring in Gary Grumbach to talk a little bit more about these amazing sea creatures. So, Gary, Dr. Shamblin was just talking there about the, the moral obligation to help the sea turtles out. Uh, what exactly does that look like? Well, it means everyone has to do their part, and that does include us. It means if you're on a beach this summer, if you're at a house on a beach where sea turtles end up nesting, to turn off all your beach-facing lights at 10 p.m. Now, it's not because these advocates hate fun and hate late-night parties, but it's because it really helps the sea turtles out, uh, because when they, after they nest, they look towards the brightest light. And advocates need the light to be the light of the moon reflecting off the ocean, not the light from the nearest hotel near a main roadway. The other big point, they say, is after you're finished having fun digging holes in the sand, fill those holes back in so the sea turtles on their way to and from the ocean don't get stuck and end up nesting in the wrong place. Gotti? Uh, the little things and just the idea of the moon being the beacon for sea turtles, incredible. Gary, thank you so much for that story. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.